we have different conversations when it comes to professional wrestling. Like, who is this show or who is that show? Like, there's a debate about who's the real Mr. WrestleMania. Maybe that's a debate that I manufacture in my own mind, but maybe that's in large part just due to my overwhelming disbelief at the number of people that naively buy into this narrative that Shawn Michaels is the real Mr. WrestleMania. That's just total hogwash to me. And I'll talk about that soon enough in this 30 Days of Taker video series about how, in my opinion, The Undertaker is the one real, true Mr. WrestleMania. And frankly, I don't even see how the hell Shawn Michaels is in second place. Frankly. Um, but then you think about, like, who's the real Mr. SummerSlam or Survivor Series, and maybe Mr. SummerSlam might be Brett the Hitman Hart. And I certainly think you can make an argument for that. Uh, but when you think about, you know, the TV shows, specifically Raw and SmackDown, I certainly always will feel like when all is said and done that Raw was Austin's show, doesn't it? Like, am I wrong in that assertion? That Raw belonged to Austin? That always be thought of as Austin's show? And maybe that's just the way I kind of compartmentalize it and the way I think about it. I could be wrong. You guys could certainly tell me in the comments who you think is the real Mr. Monday Night Raw. Um, but when it comes to SmackDown, I know for years it's been thought of as the rock show. Like he was one of the top guys at the launch of that show going all the way back to 1999. He was the pillar, the bedrock of that show. Even when you look at the name of the show, SmackDown, coming from the rock going to the SmackDown Hotel. So I certainly understand that a lot of people, and for many years I have myself, associated SmackDown, whether it be on Tuesday night or Thursday night or Friday night, whatever the hell night it's on, that a lot of people have always associated SmackDown with being The Rock Show. Whereas Raw was Austin's show. I get that. And... If people still want to view SmackDown as the rock show after this video, I have no qualms about it. It's not anything that like really grinds my gears. It's not nearly the same type of debate of foolishness as the Mr. WrestleMania talk. Like That's just asinine and dumb. But this year, I get it. But when I really think about it, when I sit back and look, like I gotta be honest, to me, I think it is The Undertaker that is the real Mr. SmackDown. Because nobody's been more to that show over more years, been in more featured spots, worked more top-tier programs on that show than he did. Nobody did. Nobody. And as a, as a result, like as times went along more and more over the years, while yes... You know, The Rock was the star of SmackDown in the very, very early days, and the show is named after his catchphrase and skip de skip and whoop de woo and everything else. To me, the, the Rock's like the foundation, but it's The Undertaker that's the heart and soul of SmackDown. He's the pillar. He's the true, unquestioned bedrock. And he's the guy, when I think about SmackDown, he probably is the first guy that I'm going to think about even before The Rock. Because when you look at SmackDown, you know, in the first couple of years during the Attitude Era, like, maybe you wouldn't associate the shows quite so much with him. But as you got into 2002 and into the brand split, you know, Taker, for the most part, was always a SmackDown guy. And you think about so many notable big-name talents, big-name programs, big-name marquee, memorable feuds, rivalries, programs, matches, moments, all of that. So many of them you associate with The Undertaker and SmackDown, right? Right? I mean, am I, am I off base here? I certainly don't believe that I am. Like, when you look at SmackDown and you kind of look at, like, who was the who's who on SmackDown or even the who's who in that company over the years. Like so many of those guys owe a lot of their success to The Undertaker. You know, Undertaker putting them on the map. You go back to Edge and you could say, well, Edge was kind of already on the map, but 
Edge's work in 2007, 2008, especially as it came down to Taker time, like, no. Taker established Edge at a whole different level than what he was before. Like, yes, you might say 2005, 2006 is when Edge really, truly became a reliable main eventer, but he became a whole other level of main eventer as a result of what he did with Taker. That's what, that's what Edge had. You look at Randy Orton, and you look at 2005 and that run that those guys had together. Like, Orton was kind of struggling. Like, we can forget that. It seems odd to think about how much Orton was being forced down her throats in 03 and 04, and then God said, Ugga, I'm going to take a back of the world title! Ugga! And then Orton's kind of floating in the breeze, and all of a sudden, here comes Taker, SmackDown, and really coming through and kind of saving the day. I mean, seriously. And you just think about over the years, all of the marquee programming that's been done with Taker. You know, you think back on the Ruthless Aggression era days, and you think about the SmackDown 6, who was there, Taker. You think about over the years, you know, everybody that was going to be a top guy or close to a top guy on that SmackDown brand at some point in time ran through Taker. You know, and as, as he got to the tail end of the career in the last few years where he was only appearing basically in Mania season, I'll admit he started to become more closely associated with Raw because that's where he did more of his appearances. That's because that's the show that the company cared more about at the time. Uh, but admittedly, that always kind of bothered me a little bit. And, you know, for a while there, maybe that was because SmackDown was taped on Tuesday and Raw was live on Monday, so you didn't want all the stuff with Taker being spoiling it out there. I get that. But, you know, while there's certainly plenty of memories associated with Raw with The Undertaker, you know, especially in the early formative days of Monday Night Raw, to me there's no question he is much more easily and effectively associated with the blue brand than he is the bread brand. Like, am I crazy here? Am I off my rocker? Am I just looking into this way too much? Am I just stretching here for the sake of creating argument? Like, I don't know. I've just never really heard people talk about this that much. And and maybe that's a reason because people don't care. <laughs> that could very well possibly be. But, I mean, who else would it really be? Because you had so many guys would come and go. Like, Triple H would be on SmackDown for a while. Edge would be on SmackDown for a while. But then they would go to Raw. Cena would be on SmackDown, then he'd go to Raw. Orton would be on SmackDown, then go to Raw. They'd go to SmackDown, and then go to Raw. Da, 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 da. Mark Henry was on SmackDown, and then Raw. Batista, you know, I didn't even bring up the great work that uh, you think about Batista and Taker back in 2007. Like, that's just yet another example. Mark Henry, 2006. Like, so many of these things all happened on SmackDown for the most part. And, you know, you think about all these other guys kind of yo-yoed and kind of went different places. And for the most part, The Undertaker was the bedrock. He was the guy that always stayed. He was the one constant on Friday nights. Like, you know, I still think one of the most memorable things I think other people would do this too. <laughs> when Teddy gets in the limo and it's The Undertaker getting ready to drive him off. Like, <laughs> I think it's still about Teddy Long. You're going to face The Undertaker. Holla holla! Tonight, you're facing The Undertaker! Like, son of a gun. And, you know, it, it's one of those deals where if, if Taker appears anymore on one of their featured TV shows, I'd much rather have it be on SmackDown because it feels more like home. It absolutely feels more like home. It feels like the place he's always belonged. Like, you know, Raw at times over the years, it certainly went through its peaks and valleys and its ups and downs. But for a lot of the more serious fans, more hardcore type of fans, I think for many years, at least, you know, so certainly in the last decade periods of time where there was a significant drought, but in general, like, Raw was where you get some of the really stupid stuff and that was geared towards kind of one audience. You're trying to reach a little more towards mainstream, but then you had the reign of God, that reign of terror, and you have to deal with Cena and all that dumb crap over on Raw. But you come on SmackDown, and SmackDown had this bigger, different feel. You know, you had Taker's feuding with a guy like a Big Show, or this guy, or that guy, or this guy, or that guy. 
you had so many other different things going on. You know, back in those uh, early to mid two thousands days, you would have freaking um, you know Eddie Guerrero there. Like you just you can go on and on and on. But the guy that I've always more closely associated with SmackDown, like even in some of the times you know in the past 15, 20 years where my interest was very waning or wasn't like truly extreme all the time, but I would watch, you know, one of the reasons I would typically watch and watch a SmackDown was to see The Undertaker. So for me, I will always think of The Undertaker as Mr. SmackDown. Certainly some of you are going to always think of it as The Rock Show, um, but I think Taker did way more than enough over the years to, to supplant him and become the guy that we mostly closely associate with SmackDown. But you let me know in the comments. Am I right or am I wrong? Is The Undertaker the real Mr. SmackDown? Because I certainly think he is. And thank you to everybody that has watched this series so far. We're 13 videos in, 13 days down, 17 to go. Tune in again tomorrow. Another video coming up. Smash that subscribe button. Click the bell. What the hell? So that way you're notified when other videos in this series come up. I'll see you then. Yeah!